Good day YouTube and hello again to my subscribers. As some of you already know, I recently stumbled onto 15 separate official NASA documents that outline the various aspects of aviation, complete with formulas, calculations and conclusions based on tests conducted in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. According to NASA. In this video, I'm going to briefly read over the paragraph in each document that contains the official NASA statement regarding the shape of our world, followed by a brief analysis of the context in which the statement was issued, and perhaps my personal opinion added in every so often. If you don't care to hear my opinion, or just don't care that you are being lied to on a horrendously massive scale, then you may as well end this video now and go watch another episode of Third Rock from the Sun or something. There is nothing for you to see here. So for the rest of you, let's get started. Number one, this document is titled User's Manual for Linear, a Fortran program to derive linear aircraft models. NASA technical paper number 2768, dated December 1987. This document describes a program called Linear that determines the linear model using nonlinear equations and, according to this document, within the program, the nonlinear equations of motion include 12 states representing a rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. I don't see how this could be a typo 15 times over or misconstrued to mean anything but exactly what it says. The nonlinear equations of motion are calculated based on a stationary atmosphere and a flat, non-rotating Earth. Here is something you should be asking yourself. Why would NASA be using equations derived from a flat and non-rotating Earth to quantify aviation variables that should be completely opposite on a rotating spherical Earth? Think about that. Number two. The next document is titled Derivation and Definition of a Linear Aircraft Model, NASA Reference Publication number 1270, dated 1988. All the way down at the bottom of the report, it states, This report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Again. Why would the world's leading space agency be using any calculations that pertain to a flat and stationary Earth with regards to aviation if the very Earth we are told we live on is supposed to be a spinning sphere? Furthermore, why is the flat Earth mentioned at all? Ever? Never mind a non-rotating one. It's as back assward as training for a low-pressure atmosphere spacewalk in a high-pressure underwater swimming pool. <laughs> but wait, they do that. Anyways, moving on. Number three. This next document is another user's manual from Interactive Linear, a Fortran program der to derive linear aircraft models. Uh, NASA technical paper number 2835, also dated 1988. It states, again, the nonlinear equations of motion are six degree of freedom equations with stationary atmosphere and flat non-rotating Earth assumptions. Now this time they worded it a little bit differently. I see already with this statement that the Globe Defenders are going to jump all over that one single word, assumptions. This is where I add my opinion regarding the assumptions made in this document. Any equations that are formulated and calculations made by a scientific body, such as NASA, using an assumed flat and non-rotating Earth as the premise for all their calculations would indicate to me that the common consensus within that scientific body making the assumption is that the Earth is indeed flat and non-rotating. Don't you think? I found the fourth document interesting. NASA Technical Memorandum Document TMX number 2514 Determination of angles of attack and side slip from radar and a roll stabilized platform, dated March 1972. In the summary, it states Equations for angles of attack and side slip relative to both rolling and non rolling body axis systems are derived for a flight vehicle for which radar and gyroscopic attitude data are available. This method is limited, however, to application where a flat, non rotating Earth may be assumed. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but does that not mean that the gyroscope data and its function are only valid if a flat and non-rotating Earth are assumed? 
Yeah. And isn't the gyroscope used to maintain a level flight path over thousands of miles for all of aviation history? Yeah, just saying. Something else to think about. Anyways, number five. Ah, screw it. This is going to take all night for me to go through all of them, so... All 15 of the official NASA documents make the same exact statement and in the same exact context. The equations are all based on a model with a stationary atmosphere and a flat, non-rotating Earth. If you are in doubt about that, just watch my last video. Or better yet, follow the links on my Facebook and read it from the source for yourself. I had one viewer comment to me that if I had ever made any attempt to study any kind of engineering or mathematical mechanics, um, you always state the assumptions when describing. He said that these assumptions are made to simplify incredibly complex systems in order for rough calculations to be made. Blah blah blah, this facilitates a cost effective assessment on the validity of the aircraft in a relatively short space of time. Now, this is the most logical argument I've heard so far, and it sounds good on the surface. However, I still see a problem with this. My response to this statement is as follows. I'm quite confident that rough calculations are not part of the procedure when dealing with aviation and that complex systems and subsequent formulas and calculations are commonplace within the world's leading space agency. If the Earth was truly a spinning ball, yet all the equations, formulas, calculations regarding the design and functionality, the navigational capabilities and equipment, as well as overall safety, were all based on formulas derived from the exact opposite conditions we would expect to experience on a rotating sphere, disaster would surely follow. Maybe I'm missing the boat on the purpose of these official documents, but it also seems to me that if cost-effectiveness is part of the argument, wouldn't it be more cost-effective to start with the assumption that the Earth is the rotating space ball that they claim it is, so as to minimize the potential for failure due to the inappropriate application of formulas and calculations right from the start of the aeronautical design? You know, just a little something else to think about. Another comment that got my attention was that I was being confirmation biased. Maybe. Well, it wouldn't sound that way if NASA was not using formulas and calculations based on a flat, non-rotating Earth, but rather the assumed reality of a rotating sphere that they set before us. I also would not be presenting videos that clearly show NASA faking everything from the moon missions to the current day ISS if video footage of this obvious deception was not available directly from NASA themselves. So confirmation bias or not, it is what it is. So that's about all I have for this video, without dragging it out for over an hour of course. Um, so to my friends and family, realize, realize, realize. I'm trying to give you your sight back. Please wake up and please try to wake up others. Thank you.